In this tutorial, you will learn how to insert a part into a parametric vise, discuss many benefits of why we use fixtures with our setups, and check for any collisions. We are happy you've joined us on the Learn It channel. Welcome to Metal Cam 2. Use a parametric vise with your part. To help support the Learn It channel, please consider buying us a coffee or becoming a patron. Links in the description below will navigate you to how you can help. Another way that you can help is by liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell. Thank you everyone for your support. So some of you might remember this part that was produced in a series of tutorials that we had just released not too long ago on how would I machine that. But some were interested in how we could take the parametric vise, and if you haven't watched that tutorial, you can click on the top right of the screen to view it, how we can take that parametric vise and utilize it with this here part. If we go into our manufacturer workspace, you can see that we've got our all of our different operations that we have made in the previous tutorial. Let's activate that. We can activate both sides. There we go. We can see our work coordinate system is up here. This will be our first setup. But we would like to use the parametric vise so that when we do our setup, we can see how our part is being held. Uh, we can see if there's any tool interferences or if there's going to be any potential crashes or anything like that. So let's get into it. So let's go back to our design workspace. And what we're going to do is find our vice. And there's our vices folder. And our Kurt vice is patiently waiting for us to use it. This is great. So the first step is to right click and insert into our current design. So make sure with our current design right here, we have our master assembly activated. And we can just insert that. Well, let's just move our vice off to the side. So it's good to note at this point that I have my model oriented, even though my view cube is upside down. If I were to go to the home position, the part would look like that. But I have my model oriented uh, for my first operation, how I would like to hold it in the vise for the first operation. And that helps us because when we insert our vise, we can just rotate it there 180 degrees. We can position it approximately the way that we would like to hold the part. So that's great, let's go okay. So now at this point, we, if we were to go to the change parameters window, we would note that there are no parameters there. So what do we need to do? Let's just close our data panel there. We need to right click on our vise and break link. So as soon as we do that, we can see there's no more linkage with our component, our Kurt component. And if we go back to our parameters, there are all our parameters that we created when we made our parametric vise. That's perfect. So now we need to mate our stock here to our part. Now, in our manufacturer workspace, obviously we have created stock uh, when we go to our setup and we go edit, our stock over here shows us that we've actually already created the stock. It's six and a half inches wide, two inches deep, two inches tall. Well, this is very useful information, but using our parametric vise, we can actually link our part to this stock rather than the light pale green stock here, which is in our setup information. So let's do that. Let's go back to design. And now we're going to mate the part to our stock. Now, as soon as we go to join, we see that our main part becomes transparent. And this is actually perfect because we want to move. If we remember the formula for moving or mating components together, we want to move this to that. So we don't want to move our master part. We want it settled there. We want it situated right at the origin of our file. We don't want that moving. So we're actually going to move our stock to our part. Now, it only moves our stock, and this is very good for us so that it doesn't uh, complicate things by moving the entire vise. Well, we want to flip this, and now we want to just balance our stock into position. So you can see that our stock should actually be a little bit above our part. Let's just move that up 
and we can move this up 50 thou. Now, what are some other things that we notice? Well, let's just go okay, first of all. You can see our vice goes right in position, but our stock is not the right size. Our stock needs to be bigger than our part. So if we remember correctly from our manufacturer workspace, we can go edit, go to our stock, and it's actually six and a half wide by two by two. So let's go to our design workspace and just change our parameters. For our stock X, we're gonna type six and a half, and you can see that our stock now has adjusted, and our Y is gonna be two, and our Z is going to be two. That's perfect. Now, what else can this tell us using a parametric vice with our actual part? Well, we might remember that when we do our roughing passes and finishing passes on this side, on the profile of that side, the tools do not go much past this surface. So actually our parallels that we're using can drop down quite a bit. Our parallel height right now is one and a quarter. Let's see what one inch looks like. Well, here we go. We actually wanna hold on to the part as much as possible. So this is a very easy way to just show that we can actually use a one inch parallel. Let's see actually what seven eighths looks like. Well, let's just try this at seven eighths. Remember, holding on to as much of the part is better. It keeps everything rigid. It keeps our tool life uh, a lot higher and it keeps our finish on our part a lot better. So uh, that's a whole lot better than using a one and five eighths and holding on to the part like that, which is just a disaster if we think we can get away with that. So let's go back to seven eighths. Again, if we're not good with fractions, we don't remember the decimal places, we can always go seven divided by eight. And that's the exact same thing. It shows our value over here. Great, so there we have it. Our first setup is complete, but now we need to select our second setup. Now, before we do that, let's just rename our Kurt Vice right here to Kurt HD 690, and we can just say setup one. Now let's hide that, and we are going to do the exact same thing with a new vice. We're gonna flip our part over, and this is actually our home position right there. Let's go back to our data panel, and we can insert another vice. Let's close our data panel move our vice just down out of the way and go okay for now. So let's make sure to break the link here, unlink it. And this will give us extra parameters. So we can see that stock X, all this refers to our first setup. And then we see the underscore over here is referring to our second vice. So we can change all that as well, but it's easy just to remember. And right now I'm going to rename my vice as well to set up two. Perfect. So here actually, we have already cut our stock on our first operation. This is pretending our first setup is done. All of this material is gone. So now we don't want to use this generic stock. So I'm gonna go right into the file and I'm gonna turn stock off. Now I would like to position this part so that I can probably locate it off of the edge of our jaw here or some sort of stop or something like that. But basically we just need to joint it in a position that we can uh, quickly locate within our setup. So personally what, what we used to do in our shop, there's a, a bunch of different ways. Uh, we could just use a parallel, place it on here, butt the part up against the parallel or we may have a stop set up off the, to the side here and push the part up against the stop. Um, there's even another way where we can use a master work coordinate system for a point that never moves on our vise, such as right here. I would love to get into that in the future. That is the best and safest way that I have ever found to set up parts. But uh, for this particular setup, let's just uh, assume that we're going to use a parallel over here as our stop for our part. So let's mate everything together. I actually would like to remove or hide our parallels. It's just a little bit easier to work with. So now let's joint and we can select, well, let's select 
Let's select that point right there on the bottom. Make sure our orientation is set up just like that. There we go. Okay, now we'll do the exact same thing. We'll do the two edges. There we have it. And now it will line up with that point of our jaw, which is great. Let's go okay. So now we want to make sure that our parallel parameter is inserted as well. So let's go back to our joint. And we're going to bring this down our parallel height. And we're going to do the parallel height underscore one because that's our second vice. So at this point, we can actually make our parallels visible again. And all we need to adjust now is the depth of our stock parameter, even though our stock isn't there. Well, this is our stock right now. And we can make it so that it's the exact same size as our part. How do we find the depth of our part? Well, we can just pick that face hold down command or control and select the other one. And there we go on the bottom right is our minimum distance 1.875. Let's go back to our parameters here and change our stock Y underscore one to 1.875. And there we have it. So at this point, we've set up our model into our setup to vice, but we can also change the parallel height, no problem. We can hold on a little bit more onto this part. Let's call it one inch. And there we go. This will give us enough clearance for our chamfering tool to come on down without hitting our movable or stationary jaw. So that's it. We have both of our vices set up now and it will actually look like that. That's exactly what we want to see. And we can hide the uh, second setup vice just to confirm what are we looking at here and we can do the same thing with this side. So remember our datum surfaces, if we want to machine good parts, we'll always make sure that our datum of our part uh, or our datums of our part, for example, if this surface is our datum we're working with and this surface is, well, we wanna make sure to butt that up against the stationary jaw. However, if this surface is a datum, then we wanna flip our vise. We wanna make sure that our datum surface is connected to the stationary jaw. Great, so this is done. Now we have to go into our manufacturing workspace. And what are we missing here? We'll notice if soon as we go to our setup, well, our vice disappears. Setup one and setup two, our vices disappear. So what we actually have to do is go into edit and scroll down with our window here too. Fixture, let's turn on our fixture. And then it says, well, pick our fixture. So let's expand models and let's find setup one. Now we don't want to just pick setup one because we don't want our stock to be picked. So that's why I have put in, under the assembly for our Kurt, we have stock as a separate component and vice component. So we actually wanna pick this as our fixture. Great. Now as our stock, instead of a relative size box, we're going to pick from solid and we're going to pick our stock as our solid. Let's go okay. There we have it. So as soon as we click on or activate setup one, there we have it. We've got our work coordinate system. Everything looks great over here. Our processes want to be refreshed. They're out of date because now they've got a fixture uh, in the system and Fusion will see whether or not our tools will collide with the fixture. So let's just generate that. And now we can actually simulate our process. Awesome, any collisions with the vice will show up on the bottom of our timeline saying you have a collision that you need to care for. So let's exit out of our simulation there. We'll do the same thing with setup two. So let's activate setup two. And here we're going to right click, edit, add a fixture. And this one, we are going to add not our first setup Kurt there, but our second one. And remember again, we don't wanna add stock. We just wanna add the vice components. And our stock will remain from preceding setup. So let's go okay. And there we have it. So now, as soon as we activate setup one, everything orients. If yours is not orienting, according to your work coordinate system, well, make sure 
to go to Synchronize Active Setup and make sure those are selected. Great, let us generate Setup 2. And now we can simulate Setup 2 as well. Oh, would you look at here? We've got a bunch of collisions. Tool collides with fixture. So what is happening there? Well, we can just select those points and look at what we have. Ah, this is perfect. So obviously we've made a mistake. We cannot have our part being held too much with our vices. We have to extend or raise our part up. So this is, again, a great way to see if something's colliding. So let's just go back out of our simulation, back to our design workspace. And now we can just simply, because we've created parameters, we can simply go back to our parallel height and change this to one and a quarter. And now let's see, what do we think? Well, we actually have to do a chamfering operation there. So one and a quarter is not gonna cut it. Let's go to 1.375, one and three eighths. There we go. So with a simple change with our parameter, we can go back to manufacture workspace here, generate our tool path. Now let's see if there's any collisions in our simulation. We're safe. That's it. So hope you have benefited from this tutorial. If you have, please comment below. Please tell us how it's benefited you. Please like, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. It really means a lot to us that you're sticking with this channel and that you're benefiting from our tutorial. So stay tuned for the next tutorial. Hope to see you again soon. Until then, take care and all the best.